I started asking myself this question. What's the point of this? If it was, if it was easy, what would it look like? That's the missing piece, man. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquet. Today, we have million dollar seller Musa on the call. He's uh, done $15 million in revenue last year. He's got a pretty large team, about uh, 45 to 50 people in total. And he's uh, meeting up with us from Canada today. Uh, Musa, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, how's it going today? Everything is going amazing. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Excited to get you on Prime Day 2023, just wrapping it up. Uh, I know we were chatting a little bit about, you know, how Prime Day is going for you and, and myself, and uh, we can definitely dig into that here in a little bit. But for those of us that uh, don't know much about you yet, like, why don't you go ahead and just, uh, you know, give a bit of your background, talk a little bit about how you got introduced to Amazon and, and what life is like for you, um, you know, where you're living there in Canada. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm basically from Pakistan. Uh, I did bachelor's in engineering. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. And I moved to Canada in 2010 for a master's in mechanical engineering degree. Um, and at that time, I came, to, I came to Canada. I was doing master's. I didn't have enough money uh, to uh, support my uh, expenses for the uh, remaining uh, terms. So I was working my ass off in restaurants, doing dishes, you know, uh, bartending and cleaning toilets and working as a sous chef and manager at the restaurant, just trying to make money. So it took me almost one and a half years, two years to uh, finish my master's degree. And I started looking for uh, jobs, <clears throat> engineering jobs, because at that time, I always thought, you know, success in life is about having a nice job. Um, and, and this was what was taught to me from my family, from my parents, from my whole community. So I went on and, uh, started looking for a mechanical engineering job. <clears throat> I landed a job, not, not too far from, um, the city that I graduated from. Uh, so I got a job in Windsor, Ontario. It's actually the automotive hub of Canada, right next to Detroit. I actually still live here. Uh, and I got a, a job at engineering consulting, uh, industry. Uh, <clears throat> so Early on, my boss, he was like very, uh, you know, like uh, strict and he was actually he was a very nice guy as well. But he threw me to the top. He <laughs> threw me like the clients. He threw me, uh, you know, uh, it, it was a consulting job. So I had like different clients. I had to go to uh, Chrysler. I had to go to GM. I had to go to Ford. I had to go to pharmaceutical industries and, you know, uh, uh, trying to learn different things. But he early on, he he like threw me to the dogs and I had to learn. Uh, what are the principles of project management? How do you manage like different teams? Uh, uh, how to get job done and everything? I worked there for like three, four years, but I started realizing uh, it's it's a, it's it's good. I like it, but I want something more from life. You know, I want to I want to have the freedom. I, I I'm not a nine to five person. Yeah. So uh, um, also there was a there was a, you know, another uh, side of making money, you know, I want to make, make more money, but the, but the bigger goal was like success. I want to be successful. Oh, how can I do that? I cannot be successful. I cannot retire at 65 because I was seeing people who were retiring at Chrysler GM at 50 or 60s and they were miserable and, you know, they were all yapping about different things. Um, so I, I said, you know, I'm going to look into what can I do? Um, and I started looking into the stock market. <laughs> And I, I took a lot of different courses about uh, technical analysis and, you know, fundamental analysis, but I, I really wanted to make money and have some freedom. So I was doing technical analysis courses all the time and I started investing. Um, and I found out that was too much stressful for me. Uh, you know, I was all the time reading candles and emojis and, you know, uh, moving averages and, you know, all that. I did make, make some money, but it was not much and it was too much uh, stressful. So I was like, you know, I need to do something else. I, I, I can't do a job and do this at the same time. So I, that was 2000, still 14, 15. Um, and I started looking into real estate. So I thought maybe real estate is another way of doing uh, getting passive income. And with the real estate, I didn't have that much money. I needed to have some equity to go into the real estate. Uh, so sooner I gave up that idea and then I started looking for online businesses, you know, started reading, uh, you know, four hour work week and nice. uh, other successful books before even embarking on the, on the entrepreneur journey. I was like, okay, I, first I need to figure out how to be, like, what, what are successful people doing? 
So I read the four hour work week and the, it's a school of greatness from Lewis house. Um, that really changed my mind. And it kind of told me that you need to have a bigger mindset in order to do things. Um, then I started looking into drop shipping. I was like, okay, maybe I can do some drop shipping and, uh, started with like doing some drop shipping on even Amazon and uh, retail arbitrage. Uh, that was 2016. And I was selling, uh, selling uh, Sony uh, a PlayStation game consoles and a couple of other things, getting them from Walmart, trying to sell them on Amazon. But I figured out that's like that's also like I cannot make money this way. This is too much work. I have to find prices. I'm looking at. I had those apps where you know you find the prices and then you go on Amazon, you check the price, and yeah. you know, you're at the uh, Walmart and Target. So I was like, that's too much work. And what year so was that, that Musa? Started- Sorry, what year was that? That was still 2016. Okay, 2016, you were doing the arbitrage. All right, yeah, keep going, man. <laughs> so at the end of almost 2016, I was like, you know, I need to do uh, private labels. So I, I took another course uh, from a company called uh, Startup Bros. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if they're in business anymore, but they had a course, and uh, it was a very extensive course, how, how to start on Amazon. I took some courses at Udemy on how to start, do uh, you know, on Amazon. Started looking into different products from China, made an account on Alibaba, uh, and I, I I launched a product. And that time there were like different softwares. I don't remember which software was I using, but that software was telling me that this product that you will sell, it's like selling seventy six thousand dollars a month. There there was only one other guy, and you know he's doing like seventy six thousand. So I was like, that's a perfect product. The volume is there, and I brought that product into the market, and it was all crickets. You know, it was <laughs> <laughs> so, I ran PPC on it. I did the, you know, um, uh, listing optimization and I was getting like not even one or two orders a day. I was like, it doesn't make sense. You know, like I am seeing this huge number. Um, I, I, at that time, I did not know that softwares can be wrong. They can give you like bad estimations. Right. I was just starting out. So, but that product was a blessing in disguise for me. That failure of that product was a blessing in disguise. So, I started figuring out, like, why is this not selling? You know, what am I doing wrong? So I started going hard into uh, more, like, PPC. Like, I need to learn PPC by myself. I need to do more product optimization by myself. I need to take the pictures by myself. I was consistently optimizing and, you know, trying to make things work. But then I realized, you know, maybe I need I need to go more, you know, and, and I, st- I started getting more products. Maybe that product is not, you know, going to work. I need to find... So I started working on seven, eight products simultaneously. I was like, I'm going to max out my credit cards. I'm going to max out everything. I'm going to go in and see, you know, what 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 that that does for me. Uh, so I launched two brands. One was a baby brand. One was a fitness brand. And uh, I launched two, three products. That was really like the end of um, 2016, uh, August 2016. Uh, but then... I launched those products and still every single day I was losing money. Every single day I was losing money. Uh, and I was really stressed at those times. I actually got IBS at that time too, some digestive issues. Um, and I healed myself, but that's a different story. Um, but the first time I saw some net profit was in uh, on November 27th. So that was Black Friday. And I saw some sales coming in and I saw some profit and I was like, yes, you know, like, there is at least some products. And then December was really good too because December people were buying more products. So I started getting more profitable and I got like crazy. I was like, you know what? I'm going to like keep on adding products and keep on going aggressive. Uh, and I found a supplier uh, for both of these products who and they really wanted to work with me and they were sending me more and more samples. So first year we closed, you know, uh, I, I went really crazy and we closed at like 1.4 uh, million, you know. Uh, my goal was like in one year I'm going to crush uh, one million. And since then, it's been a continuous journey. I I I, I hired my first employee uh, back in 2017. I think it was July 2017. I was still working uh, a full time job, and I was uh, handling this as well. Um, and then I actually I actually quit my job in 2019, um, July 2019, <laughs> and. Right after that, I was working to, uh, my goal was like, I'm going to expand the business. And, uh, you know, I went to China. I went to um, uh, Canton Fair to find like more suppliers, more products. Um, but when I went to China, Amazon suspended my account because of the uh, listing um, error or listing violation. 
And I was really stressed at that time. I was like, you know, I'm here to, you know, expand the business and Amazon closed my account. And I hired a lawyer and everything. It took me two to three weeks to uh, get the account reinstated. But that really pissed me off. I was like, you know, I cannot rely on Amazon. I need to do, you know, because I have already quit my job. It, it was like four or five months ago. So I need to do something else. I need to like make sure like I can, you know, be off of Amazon. So I started looking into Shopify. I started taking now Shopify courses. And my goal was I'm going to uh, make up processes and systems for the Amazon, hire more people, teach them everything um and and you know uh, make kpis for them and they will be like working on amazon and i want to go more into branding and like uh what 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 can we do so i was more interested about the fitness brand and i started working on that fitness brand made the website um and it's been two three years that we've been trying to do shopify <laughs> uh it's not it's not there where i want it to be but um we're we're, we're slowly 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 getting there and on amazon you know, we, we, we're, we're doing well on Amazon. We sell in all marketplaces almost. Amazon US, Amazon Canada, Amazon UK, Amazon Germany, Australia, Japan, UAE. Um, like properly sell them, not like, uh, you know, like um, like Mexico. Um, so we have like warehouse and we send FBA and we do all that thing. And uh, that's it. Yeah, I mean, nice so far... You know, long journey, and it's been almost six years, and I've learned a lot of things along the along the way. Um, recently, I'm doing more like business mastery type courses, trying to understand the fundamentals of the business rather than an Amazon business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because people actually taught me that Amazon is a Amazon is not a business. Quite honestly, Amazon is just like uh, uh, if you are an Amazon business owner, you still don't know the ins and outs of what a business does what's marketing what's like product uh differentiation what's like branding what's like uh you know uh, understanding the metrics of bringing in the new customers increasing their average order value and like continuously selling selling to them you know those are the things that i learned along the way that can be applied to almost any business um that amazon business did not teach me and those things were learned through um mistakes and hardship hardships with Shopify. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's a, a, a really good story. I, I love how you got started and, and where you've ended up now and, um, you know, the things that inspired you back in the day, like Tim Ferriss. And um, I just listened to his podcast with Andrew Huberman, by the way, and it was it was so good to hear him again and just like remember how inspirational he can be and um, just to see what he's up to now and and like hear his origin story and all the things that he's been through. Uh, it really just, it reminded me of that, those feelings I had when I read the four hour work week or the four hour body and, you know, the four hour chef and all that stuff. Um, he's, he's really into longevity these days, him, Andrew Huberman and uh, what's his name? Uh, Peter Atia. Peter Atia. They all, yeah. They're all like really into longevity and stuff. Yeah. And, and I really like his approach which it, it, you know, I think you'd be able to appreciate is he's got like a framework for figuring out anything, you know, asking the right questions, um, making things easy. He said something um, that stuck with me. He would talk to people about, uh, you know, their business and the things that they had been through and what was difficult. And he had a question he would ask, like, if it was if it was easy, what would it look like? And I find myself asking uh, that question of myself the, these days and like my business partner, right? So we had something um, that came up the other day. He handles a lot of the finances. He was talking about how difficult it was going to be. And I was like, well, you know, what would it look like if it was easy? And you just say it and then it's like, all right, you know, can we make that happen? Right. <laughs> like it's, uh, it's just such a great way that he processes information to like get to the next stage. Uh, that I really appreciated and and just found very helpful. Um, so it was cool to hear you you mention that because you seem like a guy who just figures things out, right? It's like <laughs> there is a, there is a, actually another book to to that. Um, uh, you know, I'm gonna add to that. So there uh, there's another book I read. It's called One Thing. Okay. Uh, it, I read that early on as well, and I there's a quote from that book that I keep using uh, again and again, and it reminds me of doing the most important things and the. The quote is, what's the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything will be easier or unnecessary, right? 
So he, I, I forgot the name of the author, but he keeps on repeating this again and again. The whole whole book is about doing that one thing. Like as business owners, we we want to take on more things. Yeah. We want to like, I, I slowly learned that too. Before I was like, okay, I can do listing optimization too. I can do PPC too. I can do like branding too. I'm a marketer. I'm a product, a content writer and everything. But slowly I realized like, you know, we we need we started this business to a, a, as a way to have more freedom, you know, right. not just like bogged down with the nitty gritty every single day, right? So what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything will be easier or unnecessary, right? If it's like hiring a new person, if it's like finding a new place or a new like contact or whatever, right? Uh, finding a new supplier sometimes, maybe the supplier is like a problematic. So if you ask these questions, then then the things you you find that easier path. Otherwise, you know you're always like on a difficult road, uh, and you're not able to find out those answers that can help you grow. Yeah, I think that's a great one to mention, especially uh, for a lot of you know people in the group. And and I know I've struggled with this, and and uh, maybe you have as well. But it's like as as entrepreneurs that used to execute a lot in the business, uh, right? Like at one point, like you said. I used to do customer messages. I used to list products. I was talking to suppliers. I'm doing sales, right? We're filling all these roles. And it can be hard to like put that on pause and zoom out and be like, you know what? We need a new supplier or we need someone to manage our supply chain. Um, And uh, because back then I was just too like, you know, too dialed in on all the tasks. And um, we went through, I'm going through some executive coaching and I laughed, I kind of laughed at myself as I heard you mention, you know, Amazon not being a real business and how there's all these other things going on in a business. Uh, and we hired this executive coach and it's, it's funny because we're going through like simple things, but it's bringing me a lot of clarity in the business. Like what are the five major functions of your business and the five important processes and, and just like mapping all that out and, um, you know, I think my assumption when we started that coaching was it was going to be all this like, you know, high level advanced stuff, but, um, it's not, but that's what was missing for me. Um, you said you're going through that right now. Like what's, what's that process been like for you as someone, you know, who used to do so much in the business? Honestly, I, I, um, I, we all learn from successful people and successful entrepreneurs. I, I, would, I have always been following successful people, and I always found it wanted to. To me, the definition of success early on was money. Right yep. when I when I started doing a job, I was trying to find a job, but actually get a like you know a six figure salary just trying to make money. So. I started making money and I started asking myself this question, you know, and I started the business early on too at that time, right? I'm going to tell you a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, um, inside story about myself. So I started the business. I was really stressed. I was doing everything on my own. Uh, I was doing a job at the same time, but I got IBS. Um, you know, um, my I, I was having stomach issues, stomach problems. I could not eat anything properly. And it was just like getting worse and worse. So I went to the doctors and they obviously diagnosed me with IBS and they were giving me shitload of antibiotics and, uh, you know, uh, stomach liners and all that. Uh, but it, my situation was improving. So I started at that time, I started asking myself this question. What's the point of this? Right. Like, you know, what the, I had that much, you know, I have a six figure salary. I have such a, you know, my business is at that time was doing like two million. It was still early on, but I was working a lot. But it was doing two million. I was like, you know, I always thought I would be making this much money or whatever, and it it will be a relaxing experience for me, you know. But it's not. I'm sitting in my bed. I cannot go out. I cannot travel anywhere without like giving me a run to the toilet, you know. Uh, so started looking into. I, I was like, you know, I need to get my health back. You know, if I really want to make this work, I need to get my health back. Uh, so I started looking into this um, uh, natural ways of fixing myself. I I. I started hating my doctors because I more and more <laughs> I read I more and more I read I figured out you know they are the actually the cause of 90% of my problems I had maybe a 10% issue they gave me so much antibiotic that I they, they've messed up my stomach and everything so I understood I read and read and read and I started on this fitness journey I started working out I was not a, a fitness guy I started learning more about like what what's good what's right tried different diets keto diet this Mediterranean anyways 
So I got, I started getting my health back on track, right? So I got my health back on track and I was still doing good in business. So I started asking myself again, I was still unfulfilled in a way. And I was like, you know, um, I was always trying to find the answer, the recipe. I want, I was like, you know, uh, since I got the IBS, I was like, I will never make that happen to me again. I will always try to make sure that I have, I will take care of my health. And I started on this longevity journey too, like, you know, how to optimize your health and not have disease, how to eat every day, right? How, you know, you need to move every single day, do the steps and everything. I did that, but I was still feeling unfulfilled. And I was asking myself this question every day. What's missing? What's missing? What's missing? And um, I, I'm really into documentaries and all that. You know, I watch documentaries and, I'm, I'm, you know, we all as entrepreneurs love information. So I was watching this documentary on uh, Netflix, Down to Earth by uh, Zac Efron. I'm, I'm not sure if you guys have uh, watched that uh, documentary. Uh, but in that in this documentary, the, the, the Zach, he goes to a town in uh, Italy called Sardinia and he meets this like old guy. He, 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 he goes to these blue zones where people are living the longest, like those uh, centenarians. And he goes to this town called Sardinia and he meets this old guy. He's 94 years old and he's like very happy. And, you know, he's like he's living on top of his world. He walks up and down the hill every single day and he's like, he takes them to a bar and he's like drinking wine with them. I was like, you know, how cool is this guy? Like I'm 94 years old and he has that much energy and he walks up and down the hill every single day. What does this guy have that I don't have, you know? And then they showed more about his life. And uh, I, I figured out that he was spending so much time with his family. He, he was still living with his grand grandchildren. You know, they were still okay. making pasta together, organic, you know, food together. And they were enjoying the stuff as a family and, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, my that's the missing piece, man. I have the I have the 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 freedom, you know, bef- the money. I have the the health now, but I need that social connections, you know. I I did have that those social connections, but it kind of like really hit me that if you want to live a, a a balanced life, you need to have all these three, and you cannot ignore any one of them. Uh, every single day should be about family, fitness, and freedom. Those are the things that I uh, made up. <laughs> uh, uh, it's actually the three core desires of every human beings. I later found out from from a book uh, in, in Russell Brunson's book, um, Marketing Secrets, and he he wrote that there are three core desires needed by every human being, health, wealth, and relationships. And those are the same things that I kind of found our family, fitness, and freedom, I call that, that you need to uh, have in your life every single day uh, in a balance. You know, yes, there are days that could be up and down. Maybe you spend too much time on your career one day, but you, you circle back and you still, you know, spend time on your fitness, go for a walk, eat healthy. You cannot ignore your health for a week and you work on your career. And then you say, next week, I'm going to focus on fitness. No, every single day needs to be about uh, these three things, you know. Uh, so I try. Um, so so this kind of like changed my perspective. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to work too much in my business. I'm going to work. Uh, on my business, trying to optimize the processes and systems that can help me find that extra time for my health and fitness and for my family and friends. So I'm going to live every single day where I'm done work at 5 p.m. And, you know, I just before, because when I was doing a job, I realized I was more happy when actually I was doing a job because I was yeah. done at 5 p.m. I did not have the stress of like, you know, is my PPC working properly? Is my uh, pr- product suspended from Amazon, you know, I need to assign this to this one, this to, so 5 p.m. I realize I need to stop everything. I still need to go for, 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 for a walk. I need to do my steps. I need to cook whatever I was doing before. Those small things that were, um, uh, that, that might, some people might find struggling. Like they might call them, hey, you know, why would you do dishes? You are an entrepreneur. Hey, why would you do like cook? You know, you don't, I purposely try to find time to do those things because it helps me along the way. When I'm do- doing dishes, I get the ideas of optimizing the business. When I'm going nice. for a walk, I get the ideas of optimizing the business. When I step away from the business, I get the idea of, you know, fixing the problems in the business. So, yeah, I mean, this is what I learned. Like if you're working in the business, you will never be able to optimize it and grow. Yeah, I think, um, I think what you're saying, it, it, reminds me of something I think about myself and like how I think about other people. Um, 
It's like what would happen if you if you just went and if you forgot all the problems, all the stress, all the things you have to do, and you just went and did the one thing you love to do. For me, it's surfing, right? So like you know, I go to Nicaragua for ten days, and uh, I'm I, I'm not even really connected to the to the world, right? So I can't really do much. Um, but that's when all the good ideas come. That's when the best ideas come. And I really, I mean, I I think everyone can have that, you know, like no matter who you are, where you are at in life right now. Um, yeah, I kind of believe in you, right? Like at some like basic human level, you know, I really believe in everyone's ability uh, to, to find happiness if they kind of just, you know, get out of the way. You know, I think that's what I was doing a lot in life was just getting in my own way because of all these things I think I, you know, I had to do. And um, like you mentioned, you mentioned, you know, school and getting a good job and, you know, a degree. And like, that's just kind of the way it, the way it is. And I remember that feeling of wanting more probably at like, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine years old, you know, just like a feeling like, I don't really know what this is, but you know, I'm sitting in this classroom and I just, I don't want this for myself. Right. And like, uh, what was that like for you, for, for you? Like, when did you start feeling that way? Um, and, and how did you kind of navigate that as you got older? I never thought I would be an entrepreneur, <laughs> but I always have had a hunger of doing more. I always came number one in class from grade one to grade 12. And then I went to university and I finished my degree with honors and my goal, because I, the problem is, uh, you know, I, since I came to a Western country, I realized the kids here are born with the freedom to think about what they want to become in life. If you want to become an artist, yes, you can. You want to become like whatever, whoever you want. In Pakistan, India, all these like West, uh, I mean, Asian countries, you you need you need to be either a doctor or an engineer. That's it. Right. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I I thought I'm going to be an engineer, and that's the path I chose. Um, and I did bachelor's in uh, engineering and. I, after I did masters and when I, when I got the job is when I realized that, you know, this is not, I, I, I'm, I am meant for much more than that. I cannot retire at 65. I cannot be uh, saving money. I want to take risk. I want to travel. I want to live life on my own terms. I need to, as you said, you know, uh, it's, it's you. I started figuring out like, if I want to do all of these things, it's you, I need to change, not like my right. circumstances or people around me, me need to change. I need to change. What, what are the habits? What are the traits of the, the successful people that I can copy and bring into my life? And, you know, uh, again, I mean, number one is, number one is having a big vision and a big mindset. You know, if you don't have that, if you don't have a strong vision and a strong mindset, you cannot do this. You cannot wake up every single day and go to work and, you know, where your shit is broken and you're losing money, uh, you know, you, you will lose yourself. So you need yeah. to have a big purpose, a big mission. And, and that's my purpose was that, you know, I need to, I need to be much more than what I am, right? Uh, leaving like kind of a legacy behind. So I, I think, I know we all have, as entrepreneurs, we all have this hidden uh, you know, uh, uh, a feeling inside us to, to leave something behind. And, you know, yeah. uh, not all the time we work for money, you know, we want to we do something for the greater good. Um, that, that, that still drives everyone, but, uh, you know, the, 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 when I realized that I need to do this is like after getting a job, like, you know, that I don't want to retire like this. Do you ever, um, do you ever, I don't know, I don't know what life is like for you now, but like, I remember back in the day when I was, I was young, you know, at times I didn't have very much and, you know, I, I wanted these things really I, just to like go on trips and, you know, do fun things. It was never really about a big house or a fancy car, um, for me, but I, I find that like where I'm at now, it's like, man, I just wish I had less stuff, you know, like less <laughs> responsibilities, a smaller house. Um, you know, it's like, I'm, it, it's just funny, the path, right? Like, um, uh, I think there's an old saying, I'm going to butcher it, but it's, it's like, uh, you know, a businessman in Mexico, uh, the locals take him out fishing and, uh, you know, they're, they're killing it. They're catching a bunch of fish. He's like, oh man, you know, you could, you could turn this into a business. You could sell these fish, make all this money. And, uh, you know, the locals were just like, oh, you know, no, we're just doing it because we enjoy being out here and we're catching food for our family. And, 
You know, at the end of the day, we go home and we're, and we're done. You know, we're not worrying about, you know, how much fish did we sell today or, you know, did it make it where it's supposed to go um, and, and all these things. And, you know, because um, and then that's where I messed it up because the fit, the businessman was saying, you know, one day you could retire and, uh, you know, you would be able to go fishing every day and spend time with your family. And they're like, well, we're already doing that. Like, <laughs> This this is where I actually have another concept that I use it on my uh, my own self. Uh, whoever asks me about a question about how to uh, live life to the fullest or whatever, uh, apart from that family, fitness, and freedom, I have another concept that I call that you need to have two very important things in life. Number one, you need to have a a purpose, a goal, a big something bigger than yourself. Right? That actually ap applies to that fishing uh, example as well. Uh, you need to have a bigger purpose and a bigger goal, but at the same time, you need to be grateful of what you have. Right. You know, if, you, you, if you are not grateful of what you have, you will always be chasing that thing like a crazy dog. You will always be like going, running after it, running after it, and but you will never catch it. But once you sit down and you start to appreciate the small things, the little things that you already have, right? Maybe you do not need more, right? Once you do that, you understand the, the desire to achieve that bigger goal or bigger passion doesn't come from, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, following the money type concept. It, it comes from then, like some, it comes from something big, you know, you actually want to pursue that thing. You actually want to pursue that passion because if you don't have those two things in life, you cannot like, you know, you, you cannot be satisfied in my books. You cannot be doing gratitude all the time. Oh my God, I'm happy with what I have, you know, blah, blah, blah. You will, you will lose yourself, right? And you cannot be chasing something, you know, a, a passion or a goal uh, all the time. You will lose yourself. So you need to have a balance of these things too. Where you wake up every single day, you say, "Okay, you know what? I am I am grateful for what I have, right? Even if it's an apartment." Um, and and but still, you need to have that goal, that passion, that drive, that dream. You know, you need to pursue that till eighty, hundred years old. I have a I have a friend. Uh, actually, and um, he works at a, a hydro company in uh, in Canada. So he told me once that there's a, there's a woman there. She's 93 years old, and she still works at London Hydro. And I asked him like, man, 93 years old, she's still working. And he's like, yes, she retired at 65 from another company, and then he she joined that company, and she completely changed her career. She was a real estate agent or whatever. And then she retired at 65 and then she started working, you know, and she's been 90, she's like 93 and she still works there. And I was like, man, see, that's, that's the purpose. That's the drive that kind of like keeps you going, right? If she were to retire at 65 and say, okay, you know what? I am done, you know, like, uh, I'm going to just like chill now. I'm grateful for what I, whatever I have. But that desire, that purpose works in like every single thing. It makes you keep moving. It makes you keep living. It makes you keep like, you know, going after the things that some people at 93 would not even think about doing, right? They were, they're probably sitting in a, in, in a bed, you know, uh, loaded with diseases. But that woman, she's like, you know, I'm going to still keep on doing something bigger than me, you know? So uh, that's the example of here you were using the fish and, you know, those people were happy with what they had and the businessman was telling them, go do this. But it's actually a blend of both, both of those things, you know? Yeah, and that's where I try. I try to, I try to be right. Like I'm always. I think of it as like a pendulum. You know, I've got you know this over here. You know, let's say it's like motivation, right? And it's like I'm laying on the couch doing nothing. That I'm never really there. You know, if I'm there, then I'm going through something. Um, but then if you swing it all the other way, it's like you know popping out of bed, ready to go, attack the day. You got you know these big ideas. Um, I always find myself kind of swinging from one end to the other and I find the most success when I strategically kind of modulate that behavior, you know, and, and like you said, you know, scheduling things each day that, you know, help me with my health, my business and in my relationships, uh, to make sure I'm not, you know, missing those little things and, and focusing on, on the right things that have a big impact. Um, yeah, like I know 100%, I, I think better, uh, when I work out, right. If I'm getting my heart rate up, uh, consistently, then my mindset is just, just better. And my energy levels are better. Uh, so there's quite a few things like that, um, that I just, 
at, at one point in life, it was like, oh man, how do I have time to go to the gym? And now it's like, I don't, I don't have time to not go work out. Right. Because that's how I leverage time. The best is when I'm in that state of mind. Dump that person. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, uh, like just hundred years ago, I use this example as well. Just hundred years ago, our grand, grand, grandfathers did not have any access to all the luxuries that we have. No fast food, no, uh, you know, like computers, internet, phones, TikTok, social media. None of these things were available. They were working their, you know, uh, ass off. You know, they were, they yep. were kind of living that hard life, right? So uh, it's actually funny because our brand's tagline is do the difficult thing. And I, I tell this to other people too. Like people were living hard life before. They were doing the hard things, right? And in this generation, we kind of like lost it. We don't know the meaning of hard work. We're hungry. We just call, you know, skip the dish or whatever Uber eats and we get food like right now, right? Those things actually can still be found in underdeveloped countries. You still go and see, I was just like in China and Pakistan, just like uh, actually uh, almost a month ago for a business trip. And it, you know, gave me a great sense of like inspiration. I still saw people struggling. I still saw, saw people working for food every single day. And I was like, man, you know, once once you start having money, once you like, you know, have, you know, a success, most people, they start becoming comfortable and they forget mm -hmm. their roots, you know, but it's actually the opposite. You still need to struggle. Even if though you have money, you can go. The point is not, the point is not that you, you have to buy a luxury car. The point is that you can buy a luxury car, but you still choose to go on a bike. You know, you still choose to ride. So, so doing those hard things and uh, uh, difficult things, they, they kind of like, you know, uh, neutralize you and they kind of remind you of who you are. And, you know, you, like you are not a, a immortal human being. You know, once you start making money too, like I, I started thinking, you know, I can eat anything I want. I can do whatever I want. Like, you know, it's just like uh, everything is, nothing is going to happen to me. And then I had shit health and I realized, oh my God, like I'm, I'm not invisible. I need to like take a step back, you know, a lower gear and figure myself out. Yeah, and I think if we if we look back at like the legacy perspective of it all and and we talk about like the family, friends and and what was the third third one? Freedom, freedom, <laughs> freedom, right? So, uh, it's like my kids, right? I've got four kids. If I can if I can make enough money to really set them up to where they don't have to worry about it in the same way, like I'm I'm knocking one of those out for them and they can focus on uh, you know, their freedom and, and their family or their relationships as they're growing up. And, and then I kind of just have to teach them to be responsible, you know, and, and to know that, Hey, money doesn't grow on trees. Like, you know, this, you, you have this opportunity because of what I did, right. You know, going through, through my life, um, growing up. And this is kind of like a gift I want to give to you. And, you know, I hope you guys pass this down, you know, to, to your children, right. And keep it going. Um, because man, it's, it's so nice when you can really just focus on, you know, the freedom and, and the relationships. Like to me, that's what life is, is really about, man. Like those are the best moments. I mean, life is actually about that. You know, you working, working 24 seven is not like working on your business 24 seven where your family and kids are sitting out there waiting for you. That's not life. Right. Work, working where you are. Uh, working on the business, but you have diabetes and heart con heart conditions because you sit on your ass too much. That's not life, right? So as, as I said, this is life. You people attach themselves to money, 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 right? As and when we start the business, we are also taught this way, like, hey, we need to make more money, right? But we need to teach people a, a balanced life, how to live life to the fullest, a fulfilling life, right? That, that that should be the goal. How can you live a fulfilling life? A fulfilling life does not also, uh, you know, money is not, you, you can make a lot of money in doing something that you don't even like. You can be a doctor, but actually you do not want to be a doctor, but you're making a shit ton of money. Maybe you go be a farmer and you will be more happy. Maybe you will make less money, but your happiness level be at, at a higher level, right? So when the definition of freedom for me is chasing your goals, chasing your dreams, chasing your passions, the, those goals, dreams, passion, and hobbies you lost as a kid, 
as kid, you thought about doing all of those things. But then you grew up and then societies told you, hey, you know what? You need to make money. You need to make like do all these things. You need to be a doctor. And you're like, okay, what? I'm going to be a doctor. But you need to bring that kid out of you and say, okay, what did they, what did he want to do? He wanted to climb Mount Everest when he was a kid, right? I'm going to go do that. I want to go kayaking. I want to go like, you know, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm going to be a biker. So yes, make money. I'm not saying there is, you know, nothing against money, but you need to find those goals. I call this the spiritual and mental well-being. The, the fitness part is also not a physical. It's mental. It's spiritual, right? So you need to do, do those things for your mental and spiritual well-being, right? Uh, I was actually uh, reading the, from Peter Atiyah. Uh, uh, you know, he recently wrote, launched a new book, Outlim, and I was listening to the audio description as well. And he in one of the first few chapters, he says, like, I can teach you how to have a longer life. I can give you all those secrets. I can tell you how to increase your lifespan uh, and, and uh, increase your health span. He said, but what I figured out is what I cannot help you, we, help you with is your emotional stress. You know, you can do all of these things and I can tell you if to eat this and work out this many times a day and I can tell you all the supplements and I, you can do all of those things, but you need to get your mind in check you know because this is an also another uh problem that people struggle with you know uh, and as as they get older i think the baggage becomes bigger and bigger and you know they they kind of like lost themselves so again yeah this is this is a balance balance of everything yeah uh and and we need to consistently remind ourselves like you know uh, that we everyone is like the life is about doing all of these things you know not just like one one, one thing do you have uh do you have kids Musa? no not yet but not yet. I'm <laughs> as I hear you talk about like the kid, you know, the kid inside, and and that's kind of how I've like I've reflected on life, right? And I kind of think about success, and I'm like, all right, what would what would little Nick think, right? Of like what I'm doing, where I'm at now, and stuff like that. But man, I, I look at my kids. Uh, I've got a I've got a 11 year old, so he's in school, just finished fifth grade. But then I've got three uh, kids that aren't in school, four. Uh, three and, and like 10 months old, right? And I see these kids navigate the world in all the ways we want to as adults, right? Like they come out fearless, they come out confident, they fall down, they get up, they don't bitch about it. Um, you know, their their attitudes can shift in any given moment and, and sure, they can be a little... Um, you know, difficult at times, but I think the difficulties honestly come from the the parenting. And I don't mean to say that in like a, a judgy way, but I think it's also just kind of natural. You know, the grandparents get a hold of them for, for a weekend and, you know, all the food stuff goes out of the window, bedtime goes out of the window, iPad at night, you know, so they start to desire these things because, you know, that's how the, the human brain works is, um, you know, we desire things that, that make us feel satisfied. So, um, I see them just enter into that stage of life and, you know, you start to see some things change. And then my oldest is in school and, you know, he's asking me questions about, you know, work and college and education. And, um, you know, I, I just think we come out of, we come into this world with so many great, uh, traits. And, and I think as we get older, and, and, you know, just a couple years in, like we start to lose some of that stuff. And I think it's just so important to, to stay in touch with those things and trust I, yourself I, 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 and, I, and the things um, that you want. Sorry. Yeah. I, I think I have something to add to that as well. Yeah. Um, the, I, I was actually watching a video or something or reading a book. I actually don't remember. They say when people, uh, cross 30 years, uh, in, in age, their quality of life actually starts to go down rather than going up. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it starts to go down. And mm -hmm. the reason is, the reason is curiosity and knowledge. Since we are kids, we are born, we are given with knowledge. But we are, we are, we are told by our parents how to navigate the, the rest, you know, the rest of the life. So we, they teach us walking, they teach us reading, and then we go to the school and then we read, we gain knowledge applicable to the level of a grade one, then we go to grade two, so on, we go to grade 12, right? We keep on getting knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Then we go to bachelor's, we get more knowledge, right? Once we get the bachelor's, we get a job. And that's where the knowledge stops. 
most of the time, right? You were like, mm-hmm. this is what I needed. I needed a job. Now I have a job. I have the money. I'm going to get a pension. We stop getting the knowledge, how to navigate your 30s, how to navigate your 40s, how to navigate your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and beyond. So we stopped getting knowledge and we stopped being curious of, look, you know, how to navigate the rest of the life. But in uh, if if you if you circle back and, you know, you, you just like, you know, you and I are talking about, like we are talking about getting knowledge and navigating like the 30s and being with the kids and being a successful entrepreneur and like, you know, having a balance of life. That's knowledge, right? Most people don't do that. So if they do that, I'm pretty sure their quality of life will improve. So... Uh, I, I keep telling this to people as well. You know, knowledge knowledge is equal to power. Stop Once you stop gaining knowledge, your quality of life will go down. Read more, you know, watch documentaries, be more curious, be, yeah. uh, have curiosity about anything, how life works, how space works, how uh, relationships work, how can I have an improved relationship with my mom, with my dad, with my wife, with myself. We, we, we don't get that knowledge, you know. Uh, we're only given the knowledge to just have a bachelor's, get a job and just, you're on your own, you know, go, go figure out everything yourself. Yeah, that's a, it's a great point to make, man. I think it's a real important subject and and we've definitely tossed a lot of good stuff out here for the listeners. Uh, but as we, before we wrap up, like, let's give them some stuff they can take home man. let's give them some of the recipe, right? Like, um, I, I know there's a few things I do that I put on my calendar that I really try to not miss. Um, what's that look like for you? Like, how are you making sure that you're doing these things and, and what, you know, what are like, you know, one to five of these things, maybe you put them on your calendar, maybe not, but, uh, I'm sure you make sure they get done. Uh, what are those things you do to keep everything in balance? I, I, I like to use a quote, if you're fa- failing to plan, you're planning to fail. So plan everything, you know, so, uh, try to have an idea of what your next day is going to be. You should have an idea. Try to put things in calendar, but if you're not, if you miss a couple of, couple of the things, you should have a mental note that I'm going to go do workout at three, 3 o'clock tomorrow. I try to plan out my next day entirely. Before going to sleep, I think 8 a.m., what's the meaning that I have, blah, blah, blah. I have this much time in between. I'm going to cook. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to finish work at 5. Then I'm going to still watch a movie, whatever, visit family, friends. Uh, so and, and then you wake up. Have a gratitude journal where you plan, write what's your biggest goal, what what do you want to accomplish, your affirmations, um, uh, you know, five top things to do in a day, things not to do in a day, and also reflect on that day as well. Don't just write a morning journal. Do an evening journal as well, just for like one minute, and reflect what you accomplish. You know, putting these things down, I think they really help a lot. Yes, you can miss sometimes, but it's okay. But as long as you have like a... Uh, you're doing like 90% of the time, I think it will really help you in your future. And um, yeah, have a vision, have a vision and have a long-term goal because if you don't have a vision, you cannot get there. You know, you cannot arrive there. So if you're just, uh, you wake up and you say, I'm going to be a successful person next day, it's not going to happen. You need to have a North Star that you're going to hit that uh, and keep that North Star in your mind. Try to visualize it all the time. And once you will do that slowly, you will start, traveling towards it. Nice, man. I love it. And I, I really like the planning, um, aspect of it. I definitely get stuff on my calendar and plan that stuff out. And I think one thing I hear some people say, uh, you know, on the other side of that is like, Oh, if you're always planning, you know, you're not doing spontaneous things. You're not enjoying life. And that's how, you know, someone actually isn't like they haven't tried it because if, when you go through it and you plan things out, uh, and something pops up, it's actually easier to just like, oh, I'll reschedule that. You know, this popped up today and you don't freak out about it. Um, so that's one thing I've learned over time uh, from planning. Plus, plus, when you plan, you will realize that, you know, you 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 get to do everything within like seven, eight hours and you're done. You're like, oh, my God, like, you know, I have so much time now. What, what should I do? But yeah. if you're not planning, yeah. you're always scrambling what to do next and you never get anything done. Yeah, it's one of those kind of, uh, you know, it's something you don't know until you go through it, right? It's yeah. like that that planning actually leads to the freedom, uh, and on the surface, it might look like the the opposite. But um, yeah, because that's one thing I went through that I changed big time uh, a few years ago, and and it's been good, man. It's been real good. Awesome. Um, 
Musa, we had a lot of good stuff on here, man. Uh, great conversation. Uh, we'll have to bring you back on uh, to talk more about your business. I'm sure you've got some great stuff you could share um, that's going on over there. Uh, congratulations on everything you've been able to accomplish. Uh, $15 million in revenue last year. That's huge. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely interested to, to learn a little more about you. I don't think I've had the opportunity to meet you in person yet. Uh, so hopefully I'll see you at an MDS event here sometime soon. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I plan on attending some of those events. <laughs> I actually moved a little bit away from Amazon and more into Shopify. So I haven't been too much active in the group, but I'm slowly coming back. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks again for coming on and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you.